if you own one of these cars, well, <laughs> and you're on the internet searching on YouTube about these Chrysler engines, then you probably already know that these engines are bad that go in these cars, the 2.7 V6. This one I bought for $500. This time I'm going a little bit more in depth and my previous Sebring just needed a water pump. This one, however, has a rod knock. Has 130,000 kilometers. And I don't know what that works out to be in miles, but that's not very much. Okay, this is just for the sake of YouTube and to see what it's before and after. Ouch! Oh, shit, Barrett. <laughs> okay, we gotta work some battery things. Hold on. Go. Okay. That's, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah, but that's bad news. It looks the same as when you guys last saw it. Well, <laughs> less than a minute ago on the video, but <laughs> this thing was ripped to shreds. You gotta rip the whole front end apart on these things just to get the motor out. And it comes out the bottom. There's no option to yank it out the top. I cleaned the interior. Very nice interior. I like these cars because of that. And Remember that loud knock that this engine had? This is the same engine. Running nice and smooth. This is the first start of the morning, so I'm not revving it up too much. So it's running once again. Just no knock this time. I got some insurance on it, so let's go for a little ride. Temporary insurance anyways. No license plates. And my engine light is on because I have the slightest exhaust leak. And that throws out the readings on the O2 sensors. So 263 0.5 kilometers since the rebuild. 130,433 on a rebuilt engine. I'm gonna go easy on it because it's still cold.
the oil pressure sensor too. Those things always go bad. The oil pressure light was on. U-turn, turn around anyways. These Sebrings are really nice cars though. When they work. Well, that's another successful rebuild. One thing that sucks is that, well, this is part of my learning curve. I, uh, this is my first rebuild that I've done. <clears throat> I have changed transmissions before, but, uh, well, the last transmission I changed was on that thing over there, the Summit, and the torque converter on that thing is just like, it's a flywheel and a torque converter all in one. Sebrings, while well, they're just like every other engine that have uh, a separate flywheel and then a torque converter, but I've never worked with one of those before. And, you know, it's, I do know how a transmission goes in. I know how the torque converter seats in, how there's two clicks and you gotta spin it and you know, you gotta make sure it goes in. Um, the thing is with this car, all I did was drop the motor left the torque converter in, I never touched it. All I did was unbolt the engine from the transmission and put the transmission aside. Then I bolted the transmission back up with the rebuilt motor, tossed it back in. I didn't even look at the torque converter. And it happened to not be seated in all the way. It was only seated in that first click. So when I started the car for the first time, I don't know if you hear in the video, I can't remember, um, but there was a squeaking sound and that was the torque converter chewing up the inside of the, the splines or the the slot for the oil pump in the transmission and I wrecked that transmission so you know you live and you learn I mean I'm not perfect I bought this car simply to learn how to rebuild stuff and I will I expected that I'd make mistakes um, so it cost me two hundred twenty five dollars at an auto records for a new transmission so this car has a rebuilt engine and a used new transmission, so, but whatever. It still runs and drives alright, and I'm not complaining, and I learned something new, so.